everyone! I am going to be grooming a lovely cockapoo today called Teddy. I know we're not going to have favourites, but he is one of my favourites. He is the best dog in the world. He's so lovely. I've been grooming him since a puppy. Um, and he's so good. I've actually done a TikTok on him. He just jumps in the bath. He jumps on the table. He jumps everywhere I want him to do. He's desperate to have a groom. Desperate to come in all the time. It's lovely. Um, often we have dogs that are really timid and really nervous about coming in, but not Teddy. He like pulls his mum to the salon and comes right in. Um, so I'm going to do a nice pet trim on him today. I'm going to do an attachment comb all over. So nothing fancy, but this is what we see every day in the salon. It looks cute, but it's manageable because we live in woodlands. There's so many muddy fields where we live. And there is everywhere, to be honest, um, especially at this time of the year. So it's a really good trim where they still have that cute teddy look, but it's easy to manage for the owner so that they're not matted every time they come in because there's nothing worse than fighting a losing battle with a really long, long-coated dogs because they get fed up of us brushing out knots, to be honest. Um, so I'm going to do a, a peach comb attachment all over, which is an attachment four. Um, for those that don't use the colours, some use colours, some use numbers. So I'm going to do that all over and then a nice little rounded face. It's got quite a silky coat, so it's not the wool coat, um, more of the silky cockapoo coat. Um, but I'm going to do that groom today. I'm going to start by washing him in this. He's not actually here yet, I'm just waiting for him to come in. But I'm going to wash him in this. Um, we've got Chris Christians and then Smart Wash 50 Dirty Dog Formula. Brilliant for those muddy paws. Um, the Chris Christiansen range is my favourite at the moment. I've got loads of these bottles because it lathers up really well and it cleans really well. Again, this time of year we see so many muddy dogs. So this dirty dog one is fantastic on those muddy paws. And then I will talk you through the grooming as I'm doing it and what I'm doing. And if you have any questions, please feel free to put them in the, in the comment section and I will reply when I can. Thanks. So this is lovely Teddy. He is a cockapoo and he's been coming to me for a very long time now. On his body, I'm going to do a comb attachment today. I'm going to do a peach comb attachment, which is a number four all over his body. I'm going to skim down his legs and leave some around by his foot to give him a bit of shape. This is a really good pet trim, really good for people at home. Um, that want a style that's really easy to manage at home while still looking very cute. It, you still have that teddy effect whilst having a coat that's easy to manage and not too long and not too knotty. I prefer using a 30 blade under my attachment comb. This is personal preference. Uh, some people use a 15 and some people use a 10. There's no right or wrong way, it's just depending on what you prefer. Personally, I think that the 30 leaves a smoother finish um, and you get a much nicer finish on the coat with less effort. Now I'm going to do a flag tail. So I will brush out the tail and just trim up the ends, going slightly up where the bottom is. And this just creates a really nice flag shape, as you can see. Teddy doesn't need much off of his because his owner does like a fuller tail. This is something that you'd need to ask your customers when they come in, which they prefer.
Now I've clipped his body, I'm just gonna go over his legs with my scissors. I call this dusting, so I'm gonna dust over his legs. It's where it's not a full scissor of the legs, so if it's a full scissor, I call it a puppy cut or a teddy cut. Again, they're the same style, it just depends what you use. And that's where I do an attachment comb and I scissor the legs. This I would call the same length all over, short and fluffy all over. So now I'm going to dust the legs off with my scissors. My favourite scissors have got to be these ones, they're absolutely beautiful. You've heard me speak about them lots in the past, <laughs> um, but they are my favourite, favourite pair. Using a scissoring spray really helps with this. I like using the Wonder Coat or the Nature Speciality scissoring spray um, just to take the static away from the coat and just help it sit really nicely. It really helps scissor. Now I'm going to do a nice rounded foot and on his front foot, I just trim underneath. So when I trim the pads, I use my Arco, Arco's on the bottom and I use it on the second to shortest blade. Again, personal preference. Some people like it shorter, some people like it longer. I've never found an issue using this blade as long as you're careful with it. It doesn't leave any grazes or anything. Once I've trimmed the pad, I'm just going to round the foot with my small curve Luminosa scissors. Again, a firm favourite. Now I'm just scissoring the legs into a tube shape. I'm just following the natural shape of the leg. This is quite a short scissored leg. Like I said previously, it's not a full leg because he's having an easy to manage style. I personally like clearing in between the toes because this is an area that the customers really struggle to brush. By leaving the hair on the feet, I feel it makes the foot a lot heavier and a lot harder to manage for the customer at home. So I just lift up the hair on top and scissor it in between the toes. When you put the foot down, you shouldn't be able to see that you've done this. This is a hidden, I call it a cheat. So it's a grooming cheat. You shouldn't be able to see that you've scissored in between the toes, but it makes it much easier for the client to manage at home because that's an area that most dogs will not let their owners brush. Once I've done the body and legs, I'm gonna move on to the head. So I've done one longer on his head, which is a attachment five, which is a yellow comb attachment. And I reverse that over the head and go slightly down the cheeks in front of the ears. I don't take the cheeks on the face off. I then scissor the visor and do a small triangle in between the eyes to clear the eyes. I personally like short beards. I don't like it when I see big heavy beards. Personal preference, no right or wrong, and it just depends what your client wants. If I had a client that came in and said I like a long beard, I would leave it long. But most of ours like the really cute short beard underneath, and you leave a little bit of a donut on top. So this is not full Asian style, 
This is just a teddy face. Full Asian grooming is where you leave a big donut on top and take it quite dramatically short underneath. This is what I would class as an in-between a pet head and an Asian fusion head and it leaves a nice cute rounded face that's well in proportion. I don't leave the beard longer than the top of the head so your stop in between your eyes should be the central point of your head. It should be the same length or similar length all the way round like a circle. I'm now just going to trim his ears, do little pear drop ears as I call them, which is, as the name says, the shape of a pear. And now Teddy is all done. He is ready to go home to his mummy, all fluffy, all clean, probably not for long because Berkshire is full of mud, <laughs> but at least his mum has less hair to contend with at home and Teddy is comfortable and happy. So this is a pet style cockapoo trim, attachment four all over and then tidy the ends. Thank you for watching.